sustainability have to in include some element of things saying the same. Uh, if things change, they are not sustainable. Sustainable growth that makes sense. So to, to have sustainability, they have to, to roughly remain the same. And so you can have sustainable overfishing. You can have sustainable maintaining whatever. And I will show you that any form of sustainability that we want to have would have to be invented because we don't have it. Uh, essentially, uh, this is the only old slide that you will see. Uh, the decline, or the, rather the, the, the peak uh, of fisheries was uh, attained uh, actually in the late 80s when we correct for uh, over reporting by the People's Republic of China. And in fact, uh, FAO, uh, since the 90s, uh, has uh, reported uh, statistics separately because, uh, pa pardon, not since the 2002, uh, because uh, they are tacitly accepted that uh, China overreports its catch. And uh, the, the, since then, the catch declines. And when uh, you read stuff to the opposite, this is generally uh, ill-informed or it is uh, aquaculture plus fisheries. Now, if you, if you add both and there is a considerable level of double accounting, if you do, because uh, you, you count uh, the fish that uh, go into fish mill that uh, produce fish, uh, you, you are in the devil's kitchen. So uh, basically, capture fisheries are going down slowly but surely. And uh, yet, uh, the major factor is that they are expanding. And this expansion, we have uh, uh, written a lot about uh, fisheries expanding, but uh, until very recently we could not quantify this very well because if you catch one ton of tuna, it's not the same as ecologically as one ton of, of sardine. And uh, one way to uh, standardize uh, uh, the, the fish for, for, uh, to be able to compare is to re-express the fish as the, the primary production needed to produce them. Uh, similar to, uh, to uh, uh, a kilo of, of beef uh, that requires so much grass, assuming that they eat grass. Uh, and if you were into eating lions, uh, how, many, uh, how many kilo of grass you need to transform into beef, you need to transform into lion, assuming that they eat beef, uh, and so on. So, we can compare by expressing everything as grass. We can compare the consumption of lions, of dragons that eat the lions, or of gazelles, zebras, and so on. That is very nice. And we can also express, uh, because we want to compare offshore areas with inshore areas, uh, not the primary production in absolute term, but the primary production in, in, uh, in terms of uh, the percentage of the primary production that is there, that is uh, available. And we know the primary production for the whole world. It is uh, inshore much higher, a uh, thousand times higher sometimes than offshore. But uh, this way we can standardize. We express it as percentage of the primary production that is there. And uh, we can use different thresholds, for example, at 10% or 20% or 30% of the primary production that is there. And that's what we were using. Uh, uh, in, uh, the in 1950, and that's what we use now. Now, what does it mean in terms of expansion? It means that uh, this, is, uh, this will come out in two days uh, in uh, PLOS. Um, this is uh, the first quantification of the, of the expansion rate of, of fisheries uh, uh, throughout the world. And if we start with the world as a whole, uh, we can have a 10% threshold. In other words, uh, a pixel is counted as, as fish, fish when we use 10% of the primary production in, the, in, this, in its pixel. And a pixel, uh, or we can use 20% or 30%. And you can see that uh, we essentially use 30% of, uh, of the world ocean as uh, 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 we use the, the primary production. And uh, on shelves, this is about 80%. But uh, more important is the, 
is the regularity of the pattern. This is about 1 million square kilometer per year. Uh, the fisheries in uh, 30 years, in the fifth, on the 50s to, uh, to the 80s, have expanded by 1 million square kilometer per year. This is easy to remember. And, and, and uh, then uh, in the 80s, when all countries close access to the, the inshore or to, the, to what became the exclusive economic zone of 200 miles, uh, the, the rate of uh, expansion moved to about 3 million square kilometer per year. And just for re reference, that is about the area of Amazonia. So one Amazonia every year in the 80s. And uh, later, it, uh, it dwindled to almost nothing because there's nowhere to go. Um, shelves, they were already wiped out. They were already covered in the, in the, eight, in the, in the, in the 90s. So expansion in space is not any more possible. There is some expansion in depth uh, they, that occurs and uh, some expansion into new species uh, at the bottom of the food web. And uh, <coughs> this expansion uh, was characterized uh, uh, by uh, a movement southward and that is almost one degree south per year. So 0.8 degree on the average per year. Very like clockwork. So one million square kilometer, one degree south. Uh, and uh, that is obvious that uh, the system had at some point to come to a grinding halt, and that's now. And that's the reason why the catches of the world are not increasing anymore. So basically, the increase that we saw was actually the result of expansion. Because in certain areas, for example, the North Atlantic, which was uh, uh, the major area where fisheries, industrial fisheries began, it already was in 75 that the catch began to decline. So for certain markets, such as the European Union, later uh, the USA, Japan, they, the only reason why they, they continue having a fish supply is because they have expanded. The result on the biomass, uh, that is a result of a thesis that is now being published, uh, a master thesis that I gathered. Uh, in the 50s, you had uh, the depletion of big fish was only in, uh, in again, in the north, uh, northern fishing ground. It's only big fish, trophic level 3.5 and up. And in 2000, uh, essentially, big fish. Uh, that is 90% story, the decline. Uh, but most people in, in the markets in Europe, in the US, and now also in Canada, which has become a net importer of fish, uh, in Japan, don't really notice, and they don't notice because the fish come from elsewhere. Thank you. Uh, another looming change is that uh, uh, global warming, we know that uh, uh, certain fish have become, have in the northern hemisphere, are moving north. For example, in the North Sea, uh, cod, anglerfish, and snake blenny have been shown to move up. But we have actually, uh, we have actually up the ante, we have uh, mapped all fish that are uh, occurring in fishery statistics and uh, uh, they catch, uh, we have tracked it and uh, we can see the region of the world where, where uh, there will be no fish uh, or where fish will decline and that's mainly the tropics again. Uh, so basically you have to uh, overcome this cycle, the taxpayers' money being used for subsidization, uh, b a huge buildup uh, of fleet, destroy the ocean, and you're forced to move away. And this uh, puts the onus of sustainability squarely onto developed countries, which have actually, on the basis of this, never conducted sustainable fisheries. Thank you. <laughs>